So then um, I moved over uh, to JMAX System, which is a company formed by a um, um, graduate of uh, this university, Mr. Furuse, graduated from uh, Hokengaka, I believe. Hokengaka. Um, so JMAC, uh, is, it was a big uh, kind of a change for me because uh, when I'm working in games, every day you hear these sounds of all these video games going and people are laughing and very uh, lively place to work. <laughs> when I go to JMAC, it's like working in a library. It's so quiet. You can hear a pin drop and uh, it's kind of a shock for me. And it's, I had some trouble adjusting. But um, in JMAC, uh, I learned about the DICOM image format. And uh, this was my first introduction into any kind of medical imaging. And I also uh, I worked a lot on a JPEG compression, which most people think of JPEG as uh, a JPEG file that you compress your uh, photographs with. But there are actually other uh, modes or other, um, how would you say, other um, types of JPEG compression. One is uh, used in, a, in medical imaging a lot is a 12-bit uh, um, compression. So a lot of uh, oh, MR uh, images and um, scanners are usually 10-bit grayscale. So there are lots of these kind of images use 12-bit uh, JPEG. And also, uh, in medical imaging, you often don't want to use a lossy compression. Um, normal JPEG that you use in your digital camera will throw away some of the uh, pixel values or adjust the pixel values so that it can get a high rate of compression, usually about a 10 to 1. Uh, compression, but uh, for medical, because it, it's medical data, you don't want to throw away data, so they use a loss less a lo an awful lot. So I learned about these, and uh, I made tools to compress and decompress, and all these different kind of uh, compression formats. <coughs> and uh, at that time, this uh, JPEG 2000 was also very popular, but. Um, it was just being released, but it's not, JPEG 2000 is not really caught on very much as they say uh, it was a, couldn't live up to the hype. So everybody said, well, JPEG 2000 is going to revolutionize computer graphics. But um, still, uh, most every uh, digital camera you see still uses old fashioned JPEG. So J JPEG, it, the original JPEG uh, compression is very uh, stable, it's very efficient, it does what it needs to do, and uh, I think it's a very good uh, system. The JPEG 2000, who knows, maybe someday it'll catch on. And uh, finally I did a lot of uh, database uh, browser and uh, searching for images and uh, passing those images to the dis uh, display program block space. So then uh, I was at uh, JMAC for know, about seven years. Then I came over to, uh, this Professor Date hired me to work on this uh, project. Uh, it's, um, this is a um, I should have had one more slide in here. Um, this laser accelerated uh, protons. So the idea is that uh, nowadays we have proton therapy, but the uh, the accelerator is, is huge. It's larger than much larger than this room. And um, nowadays they use uh, cyclotrons or, or synchrotrons, and they're very like a uh, cost on the order of a uh, one hundred million dollars. So the idea is, is to try to make a very compact and inexpensive uh, proton accelerator. So what they're talking about down in um, in Nada, there is a um, Ken Kyujo Research Center that has a giant uh, laser. So this laser is much bigger than this room. It's a huge laser, and it's um, 
I have I don't know nothing about lasers. It's like a petawatt, some kind of lasers. Looks like science fiction. But anyway, the idea is, is, is if you can shoot a very strong uh, laser light onto a foil, you can um, you can strip away the electrons. And if you can strip away the electrons, then you have a very uh, uh, strong uh, electrostatic field. And the electrostatic field will push uh, protons away from the, uh, you have a double, if you have a double plug. Anyway, I should have had another slide. Very hard to explain. But anyway, I, what I did on this project was uh, I worked on this uh, PC cluster. We, Professor Date and I uh, put this together. It's just uh, 24 uh, normal PCs hooked up through this uh, ether, Ethernet. Um, this is called a switch. And uh, this is a monitor and keyboard uh, switch here. So I can control all these computers through this switch with this just one monitor and mouse and keyboard. So with this system, we are able to uh, do very fast um, Monte Carlo simulations. So uh, the, one of the problems with laser accelerated protons is that the uh, energy spread is quite high. Normally, with uh, protons, you want you want to have a mono energy, which means, that, for example, to to reach the deepest uh, section of this uh, target tumor, you would say, for example, you need a 60 MeV <coughs> protons to reach that depth. Well, a normal synchrotron or cyclotron can do that. If you want 60 MeV, it will give you 60 MeV protons plus or minus maybe one percent or less than one percent. But uh, with the lasers, uh, they they're because of this crazy scheme to accelerate, it might be 60 plus or minus 10 MeV. So the for this uh, research, we wanted to see well how high can we go. If we have 5% uh, energy spread, can we still do an adequate job of treating? So uh, I wrote a paper um, published a few months ago that uh, uh, tried to uh, tabulate and make a uh, survey of all the uh, possibilities for treating these kind of tumors. And uh, for the rest of this lecture, I'd just like to introduce some of the different um, technologies. Um, one, is, one is called VRML, which um, is used by uh, GNT4. You can um, output, uh, the, you can see the proton track here. The red is uh, electrons, and the yellow are where uh, um, is the interaction point. And you can move this around in, in 3D in real time, which I don't have, I can't do right now. I'm sorry. This is um, VTK is uh, is a uh, vi visualization toolkit, which is good if um, you want to do 3D um, graphics to display some uh, data, but you don't want to. Uh, program everything from scratch. You can use this uh, VTK library. And this is a free source. It's uh, very well documented and very well supported. And this is um, something we made. Uh, I think the red is uh, electrons, and the yellow are, are secondary delta electrons, something like that. Doesn't really matter what it is, just so long as it looks cool. 